information about who this is. This is not a stranger to some of us that have been here for a while, but definitely to some of the stuff that she has done is pretty, pretty impressive. So let me go ahead and read this. Um, um, our speaker today is Ms. Courtney Epps. She's an international speaker and an author of More Relaxing, Less Taxing. She's also the Chief Visionary Officer for a company outside the box, Business Strategy Solutions, which is a consulting and full service accounting firm. She is a, the CFO for dozens to small and medium sized companies uh, nationwide. She has been in the accounting and finance industry for 19 years. Now here's the cool thing. She graduated from Ainer High School in 2000 and from Coastal Carolina University in 2002. Now let me say that again. She graduated from this school in 2000 and graduated from Coastal in 2002. That's two years, okay? She has owned and worked in a number of companies and industries, retail, advertising, aging, home-based businesses, all kinds of different things in Myrtle Beach. Uh, I mean, just all around the country. So will you please, will you please welcome Ms. Courtney Epps to the stage and she can tell you more about her and her life and how to make your life so much better. Give her a round of applause. from um, Amazon and I wanted to share with you where I was at when I was 16 years old. So for most of you, I'm sure you've never seen one of these, but it is a bag phone. And when I was 16 years old, this was our cell phone. So I thought that you guys would get a kick out of that today, seeing this bag phone. We walk around and actually talk on this phone and my boyfriends would actually call me on pay phones because we didn't, everybody didn't have a phone. So at 16, this is what we used. So I was hoping everybody could go back to that soon. You can do everything on this phone, but everything. You can only talk on it. That you cannot do social media or anything else. So I just thought that was cool. I wanted to share, that, share it with you guys. Um, so my name is Courtney Epps, and I have um, actually, I've been an accountant for the last 18 years. And I'll give you a little bit of information about me. I want to move out of the way. So I am an author. I wrote a book called More Relaxing, Less Taxing, and the subtitle is Why You Would Be Brain Dead Not to Own a Business. And so I'm in no way knocking anyone for what they do, but what I do is I teach people why they need to have some sort of home-based business or business on the side, and the reason why is because of the max massive tax deductions that are around that. So the other things that I've done, I've spoken on stage with a numerous amount of people, you know, a couple thousand people at a time. I'm speaking at an event in December with about 10,000 people. But I'll tell you that the most exciting thing that I've actually received was the notice to come here and speak. And the reason why is because I wish someone, when I was in 11th or 12th grade, would have talked to me and told me the things that I've learned over the last 20 years of my life. See, a lot of the things that I didn't learn, in, I didn't learn in college, I didn't learn necessarily in high school, I learned through trial and error. And what I call my, I tell my clients all the time, I help them find the road less stupid. So I've done a lot of crazy things, I've failed a lot in my life, and what that's done is allowed me to succeed in some higher levels. So the other things that I've done, obviously I'm a wife, I have six children, um, five of them are, are here with me today, if y'all will stand up. I know you're excited. So these are my kids and my husband, Brandon. Thank you. My kids are 17, 16, 15, 14, 12, and 6. Okay, so I started um, I started super early. Right, I got married at 19. I had a baby by the time I was 20 years old. And I never expected that to happen, but it happened. I actually had, had my, my daughter two weeks before I graduated from Coastal Carolina University in 2002. So I tell her she's the smartest one because she went through college with me, right? <laughs> so the last year, so she was actually involved in that. So it's pretty cool. And then um, I'm a tax strategist. So by nature, what I do is I teach people how to free up money. And that is not something I learned in college. That is not something I would ever be taught by a government employee to teach me, understand that because I went to college. And so it's taught by government employees and the government obviously doesn't want us to know how to save money. 
So what I do is I teach people how to free up that money. That's kind of what I do on a daily basis. And then now I get to actually speak about it. So that's, I love that part. I am from Ainer. I was actually born and raised here. My parents and I actually have a little bit more about my story on the next slide, if I can get to it. So, and I don't know how many of y'all can actually see this. So I'm gonna just share it with you. So my parents actually owned a, um, a video store in Ainer from the time I was born until I was 16 years old. So I was running the cash register at five and we knew everybody in Ainer. So it was, a, it, it was a family business. So we always worked and my parents taught me a lot about work ethic. You know, I didn't realize like on Friday nights and Saturday nights when, when we were working and everybody else was gone, I didn't realize what they were instilling within me. And what I learned from them completely and utterly changed my life. And I realized that you have to work hard in the beginning. You really do. You have to put in a lot of effort. And, but eventually that effort starts, starts paying you back. And what ends up happening is today we had three new employees start our company and we were not even there. We're actually here with you guys. And so I get paid to do what I enjoy to do, which is speak, but I had to work really, really hard in the beginning. And there's a lot of sacrifices that I had to make and be away from my kids, but now my kids actually see what that, they get to reap the benefits of that. And we're still nowhere near where we wanna be, but obviously it just, it took time to get to where we are. So I want you to understand that's one thing most people see with social media and everything going on today, it's like people think you're an instant success. And what they don't realize is how much work you have to actually get through and, and how many failures and how many times that you didn't succeed that people don't see until they see the actual success on the other end. So I'll get into that in a second. So I just wanted to t share with you, I've, I've owned numerous businesses. Every one of them I failed at or sold and lost everything I own until my last accounting firm. So I've owned retail stores, I've owned advertising agencies, I owned an insurance agency and an accounting firm. I ended up selling that, I had about 3,500 clients at age 29. I put it up for sale and the guy sold it to quit paying me after four months. I lost everything that I owned. And the thing is, is it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me because it allowed me to think outside the box. I was able to start a fundraising company and I started actually, me and my husband made t-shirts for Ainer High School and for um, the middle school. And we, we so made t-shirts for 20 different companies. So we built that business up and when we moved about five years ago, I was so scared to be a professional that I would not allow myself to succeed. And so I went to a Tony Robbins event and I'll share with you a little bit more detail on what Tony Robbins has done for my life. But about two and a half years ago, I got into a funk and I couldn't get out of it. And and what, it, what I did, I went to an event, and that event made me realize, you know, Courtney, um, you're not trying to succeed because you're scared to fail. And I felt like when Tony Robbins told me that, I felt like he was actually talking to me, and I was the only person in the room, and he told me that, and I realized that I wouldn't get business cards anymore. I would not get a company email. I wouldn't do the things that I needed to do in order to be a professional because I was so scared of letting go. I was so scared of maybe I'll fail again. Maybe I'll fail my children. And so I got up and I realized, you know, I could be happy no matter what. Because it, it is truly a choice. And I'll, I'll go into detail on that in a second. But it is a choice. We get to decide every day what we want. We get to decide whether we get up and be happy. We get to decide whether we want to get up and be sad. And you can change it in a split second. So if you're unhappy to this second, you can change that. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Because I think in your world, where you're at today with social media and everything that's going on, I think it's so important you guys to, to be concerned about what everybody else thinks of you. And I'm going to tell you right now, it doesn't matter what they think. It matters what you are who you want to be, who you believe that you should be in this world. So I'm going to tell you just a little, I'm going to take just one, five minutes maybe to tell you what I teach on a daily basis because I think it's so important. 46% of Americans don't have an extra $400 to their name. And 69% of Americans don't have an extra thousand bucks to their name. Why is that? It's because of taxes is the biggest reason. You'll actually pay more, and I want you to see this, you actually, I don't know, I'll read it to you. If you're a W-2 employee, you'll pay more in taxes than food, housing, transportation, and clothes combined. This is why I teach people why they need to have some sort of home-based business. I'm not telling you to quit your day job. I still have a business that I run every single day. 
I love doing, I love speaking, but I teach people that they need some sort of business and it'll change your life. If you just add that extra stream, it'll actually save you between four and $8,000 a year in taxes because people are literally spending, taking their living expenses, things we spend every day, like your cell phone and your meals and your mileage and your, um, your internet your business use of the home. So I know you guys don't pay taxes, but your parents do. So this is a good way to help someone have some sort of home-based business so they're saving four to $8,000 a year. So that's what I teach. And here's, here's the deal. These are the statistics that really hit me and made me start sharing this because I realized that the average household income makes $60,000 a year. That's average across, across this country. They pay $14,000 in taxes. At, that means that their take home is $46,000. And so the cost of living in America, sadly, is $53,000 a year. So they're going in debt $7,000 a year to work every 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year to take two weeks paid vacation. So I'm teaching people just by having some sort of home-based business on the side, spending an extra 45 minutes a day working on an extra business that can actually free up four to $8,000 a year. So that's been my passion, and that's what I share on a daily basis with people, with business owners all over the country. Um, the next thing I want you to understand is it's okay to be different. And I want to explain to you, in 10th grade, I decided that I was going to be a, I was going to school, I was going to college early. My guidance counselor at the time told me it wasn't allowed, I couldn't go to Ori Georgetown Tech on my own and take classes, and I went. I went to Ori Georgetown Tech, I applied to go to college there, and my parents paid for me to go. And I went there instead of instead of being obviously we didn't have social media. Maybe if we had social media, I probably wouldn't have gone to college. I would have had too many things to do. But I played sports. I played tennis. I played softball. I played. I was a cheerleader. All of that in tenth grade. And I was the president of my um, tenth grade year. I was president of just about three different clubs. And immediately when I decided I wanted to go to college, I lost almost all of my friends. And what they would come up to me and say is, you know, you're wasting your time. Like, why aren't you, why aren't you going to these parties? Why aren't you doing these things with us? And I'm like, man, I'm not wasting my time. Like, I was saving my time. Because I knew that I was going to take the classes over again if I took them here. And then if I went to college and took them. So I'm like, why in the world wouldn't I just go ahead and take those classes now and be done with it? And thank God I did. Because the time, by the time I would have graduated from college, because I got a five-year accounting degree by 2002. I took 150 hours in two years. Or, excuse me, I took 150, I took 105 hours in two years' time. So I took 21 hours a semester is on average of what I took. And thank God that I did, because if I wouldn't have, I would probably never have graduated. And I will tell you, I didn't learn a lot of the things that I teach today while I was in college. But if I didn't have that college education, nobody would have listened to me in the beginning. Things have changed massively now. I mean, I literally would rather hire someone who has a two-year degree, typically in the accounting world, because I want to teach them and train them. But there are things that you have to go and get a degree on. But what I wanted to be my whole entire life was an anesthesiologist. I told my parents that, I told my whole entire family that that's what I wanted to do. And my senior year, I, des I decided that I was not going to do that. I actually fell in love with somebody, decided I was not going to go to college Charleston with a full ride, and I stayed here, and the highest paying career was accounting. And you may think, well, why in the world did you get into accounting? I hated it for 16 years. I tried to do everything but. I tried, I had a retail store, we had an advertising agency. I tried to do everything but accounting. And what I realized two years ago is that that is my superpower. That is something I'm super, super good at. And the reason why I'm good at it is I put in a lot of time in it. And I'm very passionate about it now because I realize that it can help so many people in so many, so many different ways. So what I want you to understand, the biggest thing is go where you're celebrated and not tolerated. Because when I, when I changed, I had to change friends, okay? The friends that I had did not want to go hang out with me. But I hung out with a different quality of friends. And what ended up happening is it made my life much, much better. And I got to where I wanted to go. So never give up on your dreams. Guys, this year, um, I've probably done more of the craziest things that I've ever done in my life. I've gone bobsledding, actually, in the, um, the Olympics. You guys have watched the, the Winter Olympics, right? Okay, so in the Winter Olympics, there is a bobsled competition. I actually was able to go on that same bobsled in Whistler, Canada, this year. 
I have I broke this board just last week. I was at an event and I broke a board. I karate chopped it. <laughs> Never thought I could do that. I have jumped off of a perfectly good light pole this year, um, and I had I jumped. I climbed up it and jumped off of it. And then the other thing, oh, walked across fire. Me and my son actually went to an event with Tony Robbins this year, and we literally walked 15 feet of burning 1,500 degree hot poles, and it did not burn our feet. That makes me realize that nothing is impossible, nothing. And that was, you know, we've, I've had an amazing year. I've spent a lot of money on uh, personal growth and development, which is what I spend my education money on this on currently. And I will tell you that I put my, more money in education this year than I had in my entire 16 years or 17 years of education. Um, because, you know, I just know it's important. I know that personal development is important. So the next thing is who, what your circle is determines your future. Who are the top five people you're hanging around with? Because I can tell you, and this is something my parents told me all the time, is that, you know, and I didn't listen to them, but the parents don't know what they're talking about when you're 16 or 17 or 18, and then you get 37 and you realize, oh, they do know what they're talking about. So, you know, you are the circle you hang around with. The top five people, their financial status, their relationships, their personality, that's what you will become. And you need to be, hang, be hanging around with people you want a better, that want a better life, that are happy all the time. And so if you're the one on, you're the one at the very top of your group, you need to find a different group that actually pushes you harder. So this year I've spoken on stage with these people and you probably don't know them. But Les Brown is the, one of the number one motivational speakers in the world. It was one of my dreams is to be able to speak on stage with him. And Les Brown has been speaking for over 50 years. And he is an amazing man. He spoke about 20 years ago to 80,000 people in Atlanta, Georgia. And he asked me personally to speak with him in January. That was my first speaking event at UCLA. So that was pretty awesome. And then the other is Tony Robbins. And I've had the pleasure of speaking for him at an event back in June at Wealth Mastery. And Tony Robbins on 62 different companies. He, um, he makes about $6.1 billion a year. But the thing that really gets me with him is now he only works about four days a year in each of those companies. So, and he feeds children just like I do. And I'll share with you my passion and my purpose in life um, right now is feeding children. The other person is Rachel Hollis. She wrote a book called Girl Stop Apologizing. She also wrote a book called Girl Wash Your Face. And so she is an amazing speaker. I've spoken along with her in Mackinac Island this year. And you know, she, the, all of these people are motivational speakers. I'm a tax strategist that has some motivation along the way. So happiness is a choice. And this is one thing, I'll, oh, I went to the Great Barrier Reef. I flew over the Great Barrier Reef this year in Cairns, Australia. I've never gone out of, the, out of this country other than maybe to the Bahamas or to Cancun. And I actually went to Australia this year and I went to Amsterdam. Scariest thing I've ever done in my entire life was to get on an airplane, fly 36 hours away from home, and to realize when you get there, you don't have a cell phone, you don't have internet, I, have, I knew nothing about what I was going to do. And so I just had to figure it out. And so I could have been upset about it, but I said, you know what, we're gonna figure this out. I met somebody on the plane that was going to the same event that I was, and I went, I said, hey, can I ride with you in your Uber? And he took me to my hotel. So, you know, I think in life, you, God gives you lemons, and you need to turn those into lemonade. And no matter how much, you're, how much you're going through, it doesn't matter because you can change that. In a split second, you can change it. So I want everybody, at this time, I want y'all to stand up for me. And I'm going to show you how you change your state. Because you're very important. And I want everybody to stand up.
better. <laughs> and the reason why the reason why I want to share that with you guys is that in that split second you could not be sad. You could not be lonely. You could not be depressed. See, here's the thing. That you can take gratitude or you can have an attitude. And the gratitude, you can't have both at the same time. So when I get upset and I, I feel like I'm really getting depressed about something or you know, I'm getting stressed out, I'll listen to that song and jump up in the air. Right? And get out of breath because I'm old. <laughs> I'm sure y'all look at me and think I'm old. So, um, but it changes your state. And what I want you to understand is there are a lot of things that you guys are going, that are going on in your life right now. And you, your boyfriend may break up with you and you say, oh my God, I'm done. You know, I'm never going to make it. I'm not going to live. I can guarantee you I've had lots of boyfriends break up with me. And I made it, Right? Things are going to happen in your life, and all you have to understand is that in a split second, you can change it. You get to choose to be happy or sad. And the other is my daughter. We actually went um, in April for her 17th birthday. I took her to the Grand Canyon. Actually, we, we went for a week to uh, Las Vegas, and we flew on a helicopter to the Grand Canyon. So that was actually a picture of us. So things have been, you know, super crazy from times. But now things are, are doing great. So I met this guy last week. And I want you to look at him. His name is Marcos Rossi. He is from Brazil. And I met him last week in an event that I was in. And he actually signed a book for me. He's written a book. And you can see he has no arms and legs. So he actually had a device that they've made for him so he can actually sign. And he just inspired me so much. And the reason why is because... He has no arms and legs, and he jumped up and down last week. See, you have everything in you to make you a better person, to make your life better. This guy right here, every single time the song came on, he jumped up and down. And imagine what your life would be like if you had no arms and legs. He is a surfer. He's a scuba diver. He's been a motivational speaker for the last 12 years. And he completely and utterly changed what I thought that, that people's obstacles were. Because he truly made me understand that no matter what you're going through, you can always get better. You can always have a better life. And you don't ever have to give up. So that takes me back to my story of me failing. So I sold a business about nine years ago now. The guy sold it to quit paying me. I lost everything. And I was a quarter of a million dollars in debt. And I did not want to stand back up. I was too scared to give in. So because of that, I continue to be a failure to my children. So it may not be in business. It may be in just life. It may be with a test that you're taking. It may be with, you know, your best friend. You lose them. You're going to lose people, and you're going to lose stuff. And the thing is, you just don't ever give up. And don't allow, allow it to affect you too long. I try to limit myself to 90 seconds of being upset. Or mad or angry and if you will do that I have to get myself out of state from then on out because then it really is just a choice so if I'm deciding to not be a, a victor then I'm a victim and that means I have no control over my life so I want to be that victor guys uh, that I guess it was two years ago now we lost everything we owned yet again um, in some mold, mold exposure we had a house that was infested with mold and the landlord did not notify us and we lived in that house and I got extremely sick. I lost my memory for about six and a half months, my short-term memory. I was had much, not much ability to work and that made me learn some things. Stuff doesn't matter. People in your life matter. And, you know, we could have given up. It was scary. We lived in a hotel for 45 days with our six kids. But I can either be a victim of that story and allow it to affect me or I can be a victor. And so what I did is I turned that. I think God gives me things. He gives me things for a reason. For me to go and share that. So I, I, not only we are, we are working on making sure that this never happens to another family again. But we also were able to take that to another level. That the courthouse that we were, that our case is in is actually infested with mold. And the employees have been living there for five years. So we actually helped develop a class action lawsuit for these employees. 
So, you know, you, you don't realize that your story, the things that happen to you, God may be giving you those to help you divert your path. And, you know, I didn't realize that now. I know that every single time something comes up in my life, it's because I have a bigger future coming. I may lose something, but I realize that it's for the best. It's what I'm supposed to be doing. It's what I was put on this earth to do. So, um, the next one, my clicker. Okay. Applied knowledge is power. I never stop learning. Never. I don't go to college anymore. I don't go to ordinary schools. But I spend a lot of money in personal development. And the reason why is because I need to grow as a person. Every year things are changing drastically. So, you know, I take my kids with me to events because they need to see that personal growth and development. This was not something I learned when I was in, when I was in high school or college. And I'll tell you that this past year, we, I spend $85,000 a year on my personal growth and development because I know that I need to be around the right people. I know that I need to be around people who are doing more than I am that put me on a, put, make me feel like what I'm doing is minuscule. And that's what I've done is I've got around those right people and that has completely and utterly changed our life as well. It's taken us to another level. So never stop learning. <coughs> Guys, high school is important. I will tell you that I learned a lot in high school, but I'll also tell you that if you take the advantages of what you're learning and what you're doing, and go ahead, go. I mean, I, I suggest that everybody in this room start college immediately. Start going to dual enrollment classes. My daughter is a sophomore in college um, now, but she's also a senior in high school. So, you know, they get to do things with us. We, we homeschool all of our kids. I'm not saying that's right for everybody. It's just something we decided to do for our family. But I will tell you that um, going, to, going to high school early completely and utterly put me on the path that I needed to be on. So I'm scared that I probably would not have ever finished college had things would have gotten in the way had I not gone early. So I just think that's a big deal. The next thing is, oh, my clicker is not working. Find something you love and start doing it part time. See guys, I love to speak. I always told my parents, and I, I didn't speak till I was 18 months, right mama? And so my mama always said that I was making up for lost time because I couldn't hear. So I had 80% hearing loss when I was born. And so I had four ear operations and after the ear operations, I was able to talk again and, or to actually finally talk. And so my mom always said, and my dad, that I was making up for lost time. And so I talk all the time, I love to talk. And so I, I love to talk, but I needed something to say. And for the longest time, I always wanted to be a speaker. I wanted somebody to pay me to speak, but I had to learn. I had to have the consistency. They say that if you put in 10,000 hours into something, you'll be an expert. 10,000 hours takes about five years if you work 40 hours a week doing that. And so if you put in that time, then people will pay you more money. It's sad that I see on a daily basis people that are coming to interview with us um, at our company, they think they should be making the same amount of money that I make. And that's not possible. See, I put in the time, I put in the hours, I put in the work, I put in the sweat and the tears, and I put in the failures. And so I am worth more because I failed and because I went through those experiences than someone that would just, you know, would have came with a silver spoon in their mouth. They had never had any problems. So consistency is key. And on anything that you do, if anything that you want to grow, you need to you need to water that. You need to you need to nourish it. So if it's a relationship, if it's your family, if it's your business, whatever you want to grow, you're going to need to actually water that and make sure that you're doing what you need to do and put in the time and effort. Does that make sense? Did I have any any class participation here? <laughs> See, you know, it's funny. I never wanted to be a teacher, and here I am on stage speaking to a whole bunch of 11th and 12th graders. So I never thought I could do that. So, you know, that's yet again something that I didn't think that I could do that I could do. And it's actually more, um, it, I'm more nervous talking to you guys than I am business owners because they understand exactly what I'm talking about. So with you guys, it's a it's a completely different world. So it, I was actually more scared to come on stage with you guys than any other um, speaking engagement that I've done, which is super crazy. So, um, I talked about consistency, and then the last thing is social giving. 
So this is my, I would say I'm more passionate about giving than anything else on earth. That is um, one of the things that I learned a long time ago is if you help enough people get exactly what they want, you'll automatically get what you want. And that came from a guy named Zig Ziglar. And that is so true. I used to do it to my own detriment, and I've realized that you can only give so much to so many people. But what we started doing that I love, that changed the game for us and our family. When we got our family involved and taught them, look, we're going to combine our passion and our profits. And so what we did is we have to do something called social giving. And for every dollar that comes into our accounting practice, we feed a serving of whole food, plant-based nutrition to a, a nonprofit called Man Relief. And I don't know if you guys know this, but malnutrition is the number one cause of disease, death, and, dis and, um, and disability in our country. So I'm very big on giving to this nonprofit because they feed children all over the world. We help a, a group of medically fragile children, children that have been given in the United States, children that have been given no hope, children that have cancer, muscular dystrophy, muscular sclerosis, cystic fibrosis, all of these diseases, anemia, bulimic, and we're feeding these children. So I'm super excited. I just crunched our numbers last night, but we've been able to feed 853,659 servings of food to children in need since April the, 5th, April the 16th of 2018. For last year. Yeah. It's one thing to help people. And I, I, I have people all the time ask me, you know, Courtney, what's more exciting for you? It's helping, because we, we have clients that are $120 million a year. You know, we have clients that just get started in business. And we have clients, people ask me every day, Courtney, what's more exciting to help a big client or a small one? And to me, is to help the small business who just got started, to help them have enough money to pay for, pay for their kids' family, to pay for their kids' college, to, have, to actually be able to build up their business. See, when I had my business nine years ago, I was only short about $2,000 a month in cash flow. And I was so emotional about it that I couldn't step back and say, oh, we just need to make a couple changes. And I wouldn't have lost that company. But it wasn't supposed to be for me. I wasn't supposed to be here. See, I was supposed to move and go change the world. And some of you are going to be here your whole entire life, and that's exactly what I thought I would be. And I loved it here, and it's amazing here. And I love the people. And, you know, five years ago, we decided we were going to make a change, and we were going to move to Greenville. I always wanted to live in a big city. And, you know, that has impacted us so much because I was able to grow so much faster. So, you know, I, I, I want to tell you this, guys. Anything, and these are my, my, eight, um, my eight keys to success that I, that I just talked about, but anything in life you want to happen, just make it. 